Hey there pals, Phoenix Mech here and today I'll be sharing my top 25 beginner tips for Power World. First things first, you're going to want to get a workbench. This is where you'll be crafting most of your early game stuff. You can get most of your tools and items here under the technology tab. Make sure to also get a repair bench, unlocked at level 2. Your tools and armor do lose durability over time so you'll need a place to repair them. Make sure to build a pal box. When it's placed it provides you with a base, which is your fast travel point. You can also assign pals to work from the pal box. Make sure to do the missions offered to you since every tier allows you to upgrade and upgrades will give you an extra working pal slot. If you keep on upgrading at level 10, then you're allowed to place another base, which can be useful for when you want to build near certain resources or pal spawns. Make sure to get a bed down as you'll need a respawn point just in case you die. It's unlocked at level three and you will need to place down some type of structure with a ceiling on it in order for it to work. So you now have a bed, so make sure your pals do too. They're working very hard and need a place to sleep when they're all pooped out. As many pals as you can have at base is how many beds you should have available. This is probably the most important, but you will need pal spears and a lot of them. They're unlocked at level two. They require palladium fragments, wood and stone to craft. Wood and stone are pretty easy to get, but the palladium fragments are separate. Sometimes you can find little pieces of it dropped in the world or you can find palladium nodes. They're these shiny blue rocks which you can harvest with a pickaxe. Harvest Palladium Rocks whenever you see them, as you're going to need a lot of Palladium Fragment for all the spheres you'll be crafting. Once you get the Crusher, you'll be able to make Palladium Fragments. Iron Ore will be needed to craft Iron Ingots, which are needed for a ton of mid-game items, so it's great to start early. You can get Iron Ore from these Jagged Rocks with the Pickaxe. Starting off, you're going to want to level up fast. This will allow you to unlock new Ancient Tech and get cooler items. It's a survival game, so luckily you can gain XP by just doing stuff. Just do lots and lots of stuff. Always keep doing stuff. You mostly want to focus on collecting or defeating pals. Mostly collecting. If you collect 10 of the same kind of pal, you get an XP bonus. You also get an XP bonus for catching the same type of pal. So even if you think you have enough, don't stop collecting them. Which leads me into my next tip about how to level up your pals. Luckily, this is kind of the same. They get XP just by doing stuff. The ones in your party gain a little bit more just from you collecting and defeating pals. Pals that are back at base will passively do tests they're good at, which will gain them XP as well. You can catch pals without attacking them. If you manage to sneak up behind them, you have a higher success of doing this. You just want to hold down the button to see your chances before you release the sphere. The nights can be cold, so be sure to either equip a torch or wear a cloth outfit so you can survive. Speaking of the night, don't be afraid to go out at night. Different pals come out at night with different types of abilities that can be useful to your party and base. Try to catch every new pal you see, some because of XP, but others because they will unlock specific technology attached to that pal. The pal gear workbench is unlocked at level six, and this pretty much works just like a workbench, but for pal specific technology. So you'd craft your saddles or pal accessories here. Craft a parachute to help you safely get down from places, since there's many cliffs. Be careful though, as it drains your stamina. Keep everything. This is more of a survival game strategy, but if you have the space to store it, then do it. I got some stuff from these guys to defeat it. At the moment, I have no clue what I'm going to use it for. But the point is to keep everything because it can be very useful later. I am going to eat that bread though. Whether it's saving it for a trip or that one last piece you might need to craft something, keep it. You want to try and unlock as many passive type tech as early as you can. The ranch is a level 5 unlock on the tech tree, and depending on the pal, certain resources will be produced for you. I have chickpeas and land balls in here right now, and yeah, my pals have a constant food supply due to the eggs, and my wool right now is overflowing. Different pals give different resources, so don't be afraid to try others. Set up a feed box and berry plantation. If you have pals with watering or planting abilities, this will become an automatic farm for you. They'll plant, grow, and put berries in the box, which will keep all your pals fed. This also goes for if you have a ranch with chickpeas in there producing eggs. They'll put the eggs right in the feed box and they'll become food. You can also ride certain pals. You need their saddles to do so, which shows up in your tech tree once you capture that pal. Unlock it and then craft it at the pal workbench. You don't have to do anything to equip it as soon as you acquire it. Just get close to the pal you want to ride and hold down the ride button located at the bottom and there you go. 
Sometimes your pals get overworked and stressed. You'll want to get a hot tub for them so they can relax. One of the resources needed is something called Pal Flu. I had a hard time with this at first, but it's simple. It's a resource dropped by any water pal. So either capture or defeat them and you'll get your pal juice. Is it annoying just to have your weapon constantly being out? Just free up one of your weapon slots so when you cycle through, you'll have a slot where your hands are empty. Try to get pals with certain abilities to help out around base. I found mining pals and kindling pals were the most useful to me at first. The kindling pals can cook for you as well as smell iron in the forge, which is super useful. Some pals have elements associated with them, which can make them have more effective attacks towards other pals. Some such as fire pals are weak against ice pals. Even if you don't know what a pal is weak against, cycle out different pals during a fight and you might just find out. There's a command that will move all items into storage that already exists in a box. If you hold down R on PC, it'll automatically switch everything over. As of right now, it seems like the stacks are infinite, so this may help you with organization later down the line. You can assign tasks just by lifting up pals and throwing them at the thing you want them to do. If it is something they can't do, they'll just go back to doing something they know how to do. Try to capture pals that are higher level than you. It can be a little difficult, but with some moving and weaving, you should be able to pick up on their patterns. If successful, you'll gain a lot of XP and a strong pal for later. If you don't catch it, and if you can defeat it, you can get some pretty cool items, but you won't know unless you try, right? These tips are more for beginners to mid-game players, but maybe you learned something else here while watching this video. Let me know in the comments. Feel free to share any tips you've picked up along the way and let me know what types of videos you would like to see more of on Pal World. Feel free to like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more tips, tricks, and guide videos. Thanks for watching and happy hunting.